Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. How great it is to be with you this afternoon, or this evening, I keep saying this afternoon, but this evening, how great it is to be with you this evening. We're so glad that you're here with us. We're so glad to be with you as well. We welcome to uh, Change Christian Center. Welcome to Midweek Manor. And we'll just uh, have a great lesson tonight. Uh, that's going to help us, you, me, everyone, is going to help us as we move forward, uh, as we prepare for the new year. So I'm excited about it, uh, and I know you will be too. So welcome, like I said, to Midweek Manor. Great to have you here. Uh, where has the year gone? That's the question I want to ask. Where has the year gone? This is the last Wednesday in 2022 the last Wednesday and we get to share it together and I'm so excited about that and we're not only together but we're together sharing the word of God so thank you for being with us this evening thank you for tuning in to Change Christian Center thank you for your prayers for your support uh, however you further the kingdom of God we really appreciate it and we want to say thank you so tonight as you notice, uh, we was leading up to this. Uh, if you, we talked about prayer about a month or two ago. We taught on prayer, and then we followed that up. You know, a week or two later, we talked about fasting. We talked about the types of fasting. So tonight, all of that led us to the lesson that we're going to teach, and that is we're going to talk about communion. So the importance of communion and what it is, and we're going to parallel that uh, with the children of Israel in the book of Exodus and with uh, communion in the New Testament. So with that being said, we're going to get started. Thank you, as like again, for being here. Uh, we appreciate you. We love you. We thank you. And most of all, we thank the Lord. So let's go for the Lord in prayer. Then we're going to get into the word. Lord, we thank you tonight. This is the last Wednesday in the year of 2022. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for getting us here thus far. Lord, we appreciate you. We know that nothing we accomplish on our own. All blessings and favor come from above. You are our Heavenly Father, and we thank you, Jesus. We bless you tonight. We ask you if there's any unrepentant sin in our life, anything that will separate us from you, God. We ask you to forgive us tonight. Anoint us, bless us as we move forward in the lesson tonight. Decrease us that you may increase, and we give you all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. So, with that being said, let's get into the Word. Like I said, we're, we're going to talk about communion tonight. I know that a, a couple of people have just logged on, so I just want to say again that we talked about prayer about a month or two ago, and we followed it up. We talked about uh, fasting and the types of fasting, and so that lead us tonight to our lesson on communion. I'm going to read out the book of Exodus chapter 12. I'm going to read 14 verses, so uh, bear with me. Uh, Exodus chapter 12 verses 1 through 14, and then we're going to get into the lesson tonight. Verse 1 starts off, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month thou shalt take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb verse 5 says your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall, and they shall take the blood and strike it unto the two side posts and up on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. 
eat it not of it raw nor sodden at all with water but roast it with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning and that which remaineth of until the morning you shall burn it with fire and thou shalt eat it with your loins girded your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste it is the Lord's Passover for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and I will smite all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and again all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment I am the Lord and the blood shall be unto you for a token upon the houses where you are and when I see the blood I will pass over you and the plagues shall not be unto you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt the last verse verse 14 says and this day shall be unto you for a memorial and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever so I want to talk tonight like I said about communion and and communion signifies the blood and the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who his own body it was broken when they when they uh, beat him before they hung him on Calvary and whose blood was shed as he laid down his life for the sins of all mankind communion should never get old it should not be a ritual it should not be something that we do just because someone else do it or just because we've always done it but there is a method to communion there's a reason behind communion and when we slow down and we think about why we do communion and the significance behind it then it should always be a solemn solemn uh, time that we share together we recognize communion and we participate because of the significance of the crucifixion of Christ and the relevance of the last supper that he had with his disciples before his death the last supper as as we refer to in the old testament i mean the new testament the last supper was the time for all jews to observe the passover which god had commanded them to do as i read in the opening scripture so the Passover, as I read in Exodus, was merely a type and a shadow of the Last Supper that's in the New Testament. The cruc is just a shadow of the crucifixion and the death of Christ that is explained in the book of Matthew, the book of Mark, the book of Luke, and is also talked about in 1 Corinthians. So the passage reveals that for the first 10 days, they were to do nothing. All right. It says just prepare themselves mentally and inwardly for what was about to happen. And you, if you listen to what I was reading, you ask yourself what was about to happen. Judgment was about to come upon Egypt. Judgment was about to fall. The firstborn of man and cattle was going to die. And only those who have the blood of the lamb was applied to their home will escape. Those were the only ones that was uh, that could escape the death that was about to come. So with that thought in mind, there's a couple things that I want to look at regarding communion as, and I want to compare it from the old to the new and it's going to lead us up to what we're going to do this Sunday, January 1st, 2023. The first thing is the Bible tells them in Exodus that they were to kill the lamb. All right. That's in the Old Testament. They said you were to kill the lamb. But in the New Testament, that was a prophetic uh, utterance of the death of Christ this as far as it relates to us has already been done Christ has already died the Lamb of God has already been slain the Lamb of God has already been crucified for the sins of the whole world so the sacrifice has been made and the blood has already been shed so when they did it in the Old Testament they did it so when the death angel would fly over and see the blood that everybody in the household would survive but Jesus Christ the perfect Lamb he's already died on Calvary he already shed his blood and he are we, we're covering his blood when we're in, in baptism we're covering his blood and so the sacrifice has already been made because the blood of Jesus the the righteous blood the sinless blood has already been shed for us for our remission of sin I want to add that too second thing is they were to apply the blood to the doorpost so it's a once they 
kill the lamb there, there to take the blood and apply it to the doorpost because the Bible says that when the death angel fly over and see the blood that he would keep on going. So for man, this happens when we truly repent and we ask forgiveness of the sins that we committed. It's at that moment when we ask for forgiveness, we repent and ask for forgiveness, we're baptized and we have our sins washed away, that the blood of Christ is applied to our lives by faith. We are set free from the judgment and the wrath of God, which is to come upon the world. And I want you to know that it is coming. We're living in what they call the grace dispensation right now. But when we uh, exit the grace dispensation, we're going to enter into the judgment. And, and the world will be judged. And those who do not have the blood applied to their life, they will meet the same judgment that they met in the old. So the blood therefore must be on the doorpost of your heart in order for you to escape the coming judgment that's going to come. The third thing is they were to stay in the house. Did you get that? They were to stay in the house. The Bible said when you apply the blood to the doorpost that all who's in the house must stay in the house. Verse 22 of, of the verse that, that I read it said Exodus uh, chapter 12 verse 22 it says and none of you shall go out of your house until the morning all right stay in the house so I believe that we are to stay in the house of God we don't have to be dabbling in the world we don't have to be a, we, we have to live in the world we have to be of this in this world but we don't have to be of this world so we have to stay in the house of god we are to stay in fellowship with people of like precious faith we are to stay in fellowship with god and with the brothers and sisters of christ we are to remain in the house there's nothing in the world for a child of god there's nothing that you lost out there everything that you need is in the house we all need the house of God for it's a place of sustaining substance. It's a place of power. It's a place of prayer. It's a place of exhortation. It's a place of encouragement. It's a place where we can go and, and, and get uh, filled up with the Holy Ghost and power and fire. And then we can go out in the world and we can then be in the world but not of the world. But we need spiritually to stay in the house there's no need for us to go out there's there's nothing in the world for a child of god all right so somebody i i i know people say this sometimes and, and and i hear it but i just feel like saying it tonight somebody say we need to stay in the house we need to stay in the house i want to encourage us as we exit it Exit 2022 and we go into 2023. Make it uh, a, 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 a something that you're going to do. You're going to devote your time, your energy, your passion, your purpose. You're going to devote your time to staying in the house. And if you are not in the house, then you're going to make up your mind that it's time for me to get in the house because that's where my substance comes from. That's where my power is at. That's where I can meet Jesus. Yes, I can meet him in prayer at home. Yes, I can meet him in prayer in the car, walking in the, uh, uh, the park. I can meet him there. But there's nothing like coming together with people that's praying and singing and trying to live for God and lifting up one another. That's where our power comes from. So stay in the house. The fourth thing is they were to eat the lamb. All right. Now, if this is important because uh, when it relates to the Christ, when it relates to Christ and the church, we're not only to get saved. We're not only to ask for forgiveness and have the blood applied, but we are to continue every day to partake of the lamb. We are to eat the lamb or we are to eat the word of God. We're to read the word of God. We're to be fed by the preaching and the teaching and, and, and fed by meditating on the word of God. It is very uh, uh, necessary, church. It is very necessary that we hide the word of God in our heart that we might not sin against him. Another thing they said in when we was reading the opening scripture, it said that none of the lamb was to be wasted. All right. None of the lamb was to be wasted. They ate all they could eat that night. And none of it was to be wasted. So nothing was to be kept until the morning. 
So then we must consume Christ. We must be consumed by Christ. We must eat the word of God, partake of his substance daily and not let any of him go to waste. This world, they may not realize it, but they need Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm not the perfect person and there's so much of God. I probably haven't even scratched the surface of the depthness of God. But I'm telling you, we're living in a world that needs Jesus. We're living in a world where they think that they have riches and they have goods and they have all this thing in there and they're suffice. It was it's sufficient for them. But I'm here to tell you tonight that the Bible says heaven and earth is going to pass away. Only thing that's going to be left is what you have done for Christ. And I'm telling you, this world needs Jesus. We need to eat the lamb every single day. We need to eat the word of God every single day. I want all I can get of Christ. I want all that my family can get of Christ. I want everyone that associated with us. I want you to get as much of God in you as you can. We need him to fill us with his spirit every single day. We need more of Christ. As we go out in the world and we give of ourselves and we and, 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 and we come back and we're empty, that's why we come together like on a Wednesday night. That's why we come together on a Sunday because I may be down here because I've given of myself. But when I'm around people of like precious faith and we're worshiping God and we're praising God and we're singing songs and we're, we're praying and we're doing all those things, then God will refill me with the spirit and I can go back out into the world and I can live to fight as they say another day so we need to eat all of Christ as we can when I'm talking about I'm talking about the word of God we need to be filled with the word of God the fifth thing is this the Bible says this if the lamb was too much for one house to consume then they were to call their neighbor into the house and share their lamb. I, I, I have to read that again because I want you to get if the lamb was too much for one house to consume, they were to call their neighbors into the house and share the lamb with them. That's the call, church. That's the call for us. That's why we're here. That's our call. Jesus Christ who is the Lamb of God. He is more than enough for every single person. There's more of Jesus to go around than we can ever consume. He is so vast. He is so great. He is eternally enormous that he's so big that we are to call our neighbors. We are to share the word of God with our neighbors. We are to share the, 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 the slain lamb. We are to share the, the atoning power of Christ. We need to share the persevering sacrifice. What God has done for us. We need to share that with our neighbors. We need to share that with our friends. We need to share it with our family. We need to share it with our enemies. We need to share it with anyone that's willing to listen because there is so much of him to go around that, like I said earlier, we haven't scratched the surface of the enormity of the God that we serve. He is, the Bible says that, that heaven is his, his seat and, and the earth is his footstool. Do you know how big he is? We look at our problems sometimes, and, and you know this is just added on. We we, we look at our problems sometimes, and we see how big the problem is. And I know you've read that, but I, I truly believe that we look at the problem and we get overwhelmed. The problem is big. I don't know how I'm gonna handle it, but I want us to understand tonight that we serve a God that's bigger than any problem we will ever have. He is bigger than any situation we will ever encounter. He is bigger. He is larger. He is mightier. He has never lost a battle. This is the God that we need to share with the people. This is the God that we need to share with our neighbors. The Bible told them, if the, if the lamb is too much for your home, go get your neighbor. Bring them into your house. So, that's church gives us a reason to fellowship. We can have all the God 
that we have need as a family. We can have all the God, but it's somebody that's next door. It's somebody that's down the street that may not have it. And we can either bring them into our house or bring them into our fellowship or bring them into our inner circle and share Christ with them. So when I look at the New Testament, I see that to back what up I just said, I see that Jesus came, the Bible said, to the Jews first or to the house of Israel. But then he was shared with the Gentiles. All right. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. So he went to the Gentiles. That is us. So in other words, it backs up what I just read in Exodus. If the lamb is too much for your house. Share it with your neighbors. Jesus, he was too much for the house of Israel. They didn't even claim him. So he went to the Gentiles. Exodus 12 and 3 says, If the lamb is too large for one house to consume, then gather others together and share the lamb. Share the word of God, church. Share where God, share your testimony. Share where God has done for you. All right. So when the Lamb of God was slain, let me get back to that. When the Lamb of God was slain, he was so large, church. He was so vast, so enormous that God did more than call all of Israel together. God called together all the nations of the world to come to his table. The table that he has prepared in the presence of our enemies. To come to the table that he has prepared, a table full of grace, and to partake of the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. And guess what? He is so vast that people are still consuming and eating him today. They're, 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 they're eating on his word. They're meditating on his word. They're chewing on the, on the spiritual bread. God came to this earth for us. All right. And he is so much and so large that we can have as much of him as we want. So whosoever will come and eat and partake and feast on the Lamb of God. And I believe that more and more people, if we will only obey the command to call our neighbors in the house, will come in and partake of the Lord's Supper. They will come in and partake of what God has provided. They will come in and receive the grace that God has already provided. They will have the blood applied to their lives. They will repent of their sin. They will be baptized in Jesus' name for remission or washing away of their sin. They will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But we have to share the Lamb of God with them. We have to share Christ with them. And I believe that's what we are called to do. And that leads me to the, what I want to end with tonight for as communion is concerned. That was leading up to what I want to talk about tonight. And just be about two or three minutes and I'll be done. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 24 through 26. All right. If you look at communion, it's in, it's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But I like to read the one in 1 Corinthians because it's more detailed. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. And when he, meaning Jesus, had given thanks, he break it, meaning the bread. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Remember that this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. So, church. I want to bring two things out rather quickly. The Bible says, this do in remembrance of me. It didn't say, if you do it. It said, do this in remembrance of me. It also said, do this in remembrance of me when you drink the water, when you drink the cup. So what am I saying? I'm saying that communion is biblical. 
Communion is something that, that we're required to do by the word of God. We're required to do it and we're required to remember why we do it, to know what we're doing and why we're doing it. And we're required to show the Lord's death until he comes or to remember until he comes. So with that being said, we'll be partaking of communion this coming Sunday, January 1st, 2023, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, immediately following service. We will have communion cup for those that are in the sanctuary. But if you are watching uh, remotely, then we encourage you to participate along with us. Let's 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 take some time and remember the Lord's death, burial and resurrection through communion. And so with that being said, before Sunday, this is what I want to ask each and every one of us, whether you're listening tonight or uh, tomorrow or whatever day you're listening to it before Sunday. We ask you to take some time alone, search your heart, search your intent, your motives. Ask the Lord to forgive you for any sins that you may know or that you may not know. Ask God to forgive you, to restore you, to cleanse you, to create in you a clean heart and renew a right spirit with you. Ask God to let the mind that's in him be also in you. Ask God to 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 let you hide his word in your heart that you might not sin against him. So when we come together on Sunday to partake of communion, that we can stand holy, acceptable, and blameless and righteous before the Lord as we remember his death, burial, and resurrection. I hope this shed some light on you. I thank you for joining us here tonight for our midweek manner. I pray that you will join us Sunday, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time as we praise, worship, lift up the name of the Lord. I have a message that I feel like God has given me. It's along this line. And after that, we're going to partake in communion together. May God bless you. May God be with you. May God keep you. And we'll see you this, this coming Sunday, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time for the Word. God bless you.